Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today I'm not at my door, but I'm close to my home in an urban park right in the center of a small city in the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia. And I was driving through town and I thought, man, I'll stop in and see if there's any of the spring woodland wildflowers blooming yet. And I love spring woodland wildflowers. They are so cool because they come up early in the spring as you can see, before any vegetation has come out on the trees, there's no leaves on the trees yet. So anything that comes up now, and you can see a green tinge behind me, has unlimited sunlight. And so part of the niche of spring woodland wildflowers is to come out before the canopy comes in so they get plenty of light. And they also get all the pollinators. Spring woodland wildflowers flower very early in the season and some of them go through their entire life cycle in a matter of a couple weeks. They'll sprout, produce leaves, produce flowers, and go to seed and die out before even any of the leaves come out in the trees. Today, I wanna to focus on a plant that I really love. It's called bloodroot. And I'll tell you how to find it, where to find it, how to identify it, and some really cool natural history about this plant and its uses by indigenous peoples. I'll also tell you how ants are involved in spreading its seeds. So stay tuned and let's check out bloodroot. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. And there's a make this invasive. There's a top. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes of terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. So this is what late March looks like in the Appalachian Mountains. And you can see that there's no leaves on the trees above, but there's uh, some greening coming out here on the forest floor. And right now, the forest floor includes the bloodroot plant. Here's some Christmas ferns. This is chickweed that's coming up, and I hope to do an episode on that. Over here is Pennsylvania bittercress. Here, just starting to open up, is a spring wooden flower called Spring Beauty. And here's a close-up of the Spring Beauty flower. It has a beautiful five-petaled flower with grass-like leaves. So it's actually March 18th here, which is pretty early in the season. It's really technically probably still winter. And here, catching my eye, is the first bloodroot flower that I can see. And it is just so spectacular. I think the, the white of these petals is just so intense and there's nothing like it. It has a yellow center. It has a number of petals. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, seven or eight petals around it. And the whole plant is one stem for the flower and one stem for the leaves. And this is coming up so early that the leaves haven't completely unfurled yet. And this is a characteristic for the identification of this flower. Look in woodlands, uh, look for a single flower on a single stem, and then a leaf on another stem that often comes up after the flower and wraps around that stem. So taking a close look at the flower, it's less than two inches in diameter. It has a single pistil right in the center of that flower. And it has a number of bright yellow stamens. And you can see relative to the size of my hand, how big this flower is. The single stem and then the leaf that's wrapped around it. And this tells, shows you the shape of the leaf. It's uh, kind of this scalloped edge with some real deep lobes. And I think there's no other leaf like this one. So the common name of this flower, as well as the scientific name, Sanguinera canadensis, both have the word blood in them. And the word bloodroot, its common name, refers to the fact that if you break this stem, there's an acrid yellow, orange, sometimes reddish, closer to the root pigment in the plant. 
So this red juice or sap in this plant is an alkaloid that is very toxic and can cause some pretty significant skin irritations. It also has a history of medicinal use and these alkaloids are all pharmaceutically active. Keep in mind, you know, when I talk about some of these toxins in plants, a lot of these toxins that are alkaloids are actually pharmaceutically active and are used in various medicines. And many of our medicines come directly from plants. For example, indigenous peoples of America would chew on the bark of willow trees, of black willow, to relieve headaches. Well, later on, scientists evaluated the bark extracts and found it contained salicylic acid. And in fact, salicylic acid is aspirin. So many, many of these plants have medicinal uses that were used in the past, and some of them are currently still used in drugs today. I don't want to break a stem because I have such great respect for the woodland wildflowers, that how they come up once a year and are isolated in very specific natural habitat. So I don't want to break that open and show you, but I do want you to take my word for it. Indigenous peoples of America also use the dyes here for, for baskets and for clothing. So it had a lot of important uses. Pollinators are sometimes hard to come by. And I think you just saw that little beetle roll by and I've seen several beetles on these plants and you can see him just coming up around the edge there. And I'm wondering if perhaps the beetles are helping pollinate this particular species. So I just came up on another bloodroot flower and you can see that again, like all of these flowers have beetles on them and I've seen them moving up to the stamens and I'm sure that they are aiding in the pollination of this plant. So you know if you're watching nature at your door, I'm gonna tell you some really cool things about every organism I'm fine. And the really cool thing about this bloodroot is that it has developed a long-term relationship with ants to help it spread its seeds. So the seeds are produced in a seed pod after the flower has been pollinated. And when the seed pods open up, these seeds come out. And attached to each seed is an eliosome. And eliosomes are like a little fatty deposit connected to the seed. Well, the ants come up the plant and grab the seed because they want that fatty structure that's with it. And they take the seeds back to their nest and remove the eliosome and enjoy the nutrition from the fatty deposit and they discard the seed in its waste pile. So here the ants take the seeds, they travel some distance away from the original plant, so they're spreading out, and then they're placed underground, often in, in a structure of compost that helps the seeds sprout. It's a really cool relationship. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Nature at Your Door. I love these spring ephemeral woodland wildflowers. Again, they're so cool because they only come up a certain time of the year. Many of them have very, very specific habitat requirements and soil requirements. You can't transplant them, so you can't see them in a museum. You have to go out into the forest, into the special habitat where they are, and you have to go right when they're blooming a certain time of the year and if you miss it you have to wait another year before you can see them again thanks for watching if you like what i do and you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe to my channel leave me a like and leave me comments i love hearing from my viewers check out the youtube comments at the end of this video and leave me a comment leave me a question i'll get back to you right away thanks for watching nature at your door you can be sure that I'm going to be back here and I'm going to do more episodes on the spring woodland wildflowers as they come up.